It's all good. Go on and sing. But the musicians are like, what are we doing without the drummer? <laughs> what are we doing without Caleb? It doesn't matter about the instruments. It doesn't matter about all the chaos and the noise. It doesn't matter about the loudness. And at Christmas, doesn't it seem like there's a lot of loudness and a lot of chaos? Wow. Gotta go here, gotta go there, gotta buy this, gotta buy that. And really, what we need to do is take a deep breath and just sit down and go, okay, God, let's just, let's just be with you for a while. Let's let the rest of it go to the side and let's just focus on God. So real quick, let's do that. God, I thank you for these people that have come here today. I thank you that you are the God of hope. You are the God of laughter and joy. And even when we work our hardest to make things as perfect as they can be, and it all goes awry, you are still pleased. And you still find joy in what we bring. Our finest gifts, our best efforts, and our hearts. Because every Sunday, this Sunday and every Sunday, what it's about is coming and being in your presence. So we ask you to let your spirit be here today. You know the needs, you know the hearts. Let your spirit move. Let every word that I say be a word that you give. And let every person who leaves here today leave knowing that they've stood in the presence of God. And let every person that watches on Facebook or later on YouTube, let them find joy, hope, laughter in all of the moments that you give. Let your spirit be here now. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. So last week we talked about a baby being born. Not that baby. We talked about Zachariah and Elizabeth and how they were told they would have a baby. And they're like, dude, we are old. But it happened. So today we're going to talk about another baby story. Sort of. Not the entire thing. But I want to take you back to Mary. And when the angel comes to Mary and tells Mary, guess what, Mary? You're going to have a kid. This is in Luke chapter 1. And it starts around about verse 29. 26, I lied. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at the angel's words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Don't be afraid. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel. Since I am a virgin. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the only one to be born will be <laughs> the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she, who was said to be barren, is now in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. I am God's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. Y'all ever really think about Mary? Like, really think about Mary? So, for the longest, I had the wrong vision of Mary. I just figured, you know, a younger female, you know, like you. Never been married, never done the deed, that's Mary. Then you really start looking at Mary, and Mary is not that. 
Mary's even younger than this. Mary's like a child bride, pretty much. She's young. And she's never, ever. She's a virgin. So a child is standing facing an angel. Child, sort of, teen. A teen is facing an angel. Think of your teenage self. If an angel landed in your room as you are a teenager and say, hey, this thing's going to happen to you. Even though you ain't never been with a man, this is what's going to happen. Would teenage you be like, okay, cool. Let it be how you say. So let it be. Teenage Christian would have been like, whoa, angel. <laughs> we got to talk for a minute. <laughs> First of all, I don't swing that way. Second, I don't want to birth no baby. What are you talking about? But Mary, little Mary, stood in the presence of Gabriel and said, okay. Knowing she's young, knowing Joseph probably ain't going to like this one little bit, knowing all kinds of things could end up happening. Then there's the song that comes much, much later. Everybody know the Mary Did You Know song? Mary, did you know that your baby boy, you know what you're singing. So years and years and years and years and years and years and years later, someone sits down and writes that, Mary, did you know? Y'all, what did this just say? The angel told Mary, he will be great and will be called the son of God. Uh, Mary knew. Did Mary know every little detail? Maybe not. But Mary knew this was big. Mary knew this was different. Mary knew that it would shake things up. It took a lot of faith. At Christmas we talk about peace, hope, love, joy. But y'all, there's this thing called faith. And without faith, I don't know. Without knowing, I don't know that you can really have those things. We've done a really good job of talking about saying, yes, God. In 2018, Sherry pointed it out. Let me give her props, okay? Because she'll, she'll be done told y'all herself. We've done a really good job of talking about, yes, God. We've done a really good job of talking about what does it mean to be called by God? How does that look in the real world? But you know what we haven't really talked about? What does it mean to know God? What does it mean to say yes, God, when God is calling in a different way? Not calling to say, oh, pull out your wallet and give somebody some money. But calling instead to say, give me your heart. Stop doing it your own way. Let me wreck you in all kinds of ways. We think it's about all these outward things, but really what God is calling us to is this inner thing. God is calling us to relationship. God is calling us to faith, to knowing. And we come in week in and week out, or we watch on Facebook week in and week out, and we're like, oh, so God's calling me just to go save the world. I'm going to go give them food, I'm going to go give them clothing, and we're good. What if God calling is something totally different? What if when God dials your number, God is dialing your number to say, you know, you kind of need to talk to me about some things. You're thinking that I haven't noticed that you ain't giving your all. You think I haven't noticed that you ain't really trusting me. You think that I haven't noticed how you're sort of cheating around the edges just enough, but not enough to get caught. You think I don't know. You need to bring all of that to me, and we need to talk. And I need to take you and make you whole. What if that's what the calling is about? And what if we're rushing past that part to get out here to the part where we feed the hungry and clothe the people without clothes and take care of people? 
What if I'm rushing past that part because, you know, that part's hard. God, you want me to look at me? You want me to look at me? You want me to find all the broken bits and pieces and go, okay, God, here, let's talk about this? God, that ain't cool. That ain't cool, God. I don't like that part at all. What is God calling you for? It's not just to feed people. It's not just to donate when you have the funds to donate. It's not just to show up and laugh and have fun. God wants relationship with you. That's what God's calling us to. Relationship. <coughs> and that's where the joy comes in. Amen. There's a verse Isaiah 12, 6. Shout aloud and sing for joy, people. For great is the God of Israel who is among you. Who is among you. Remember when we talked about it's like God just goes boop and sits right in the middle? God is among you. That's where your joy comes from. It doesn't come from you laughing at me because I'm loud and stupid looking. It doesn't come from just sitting here week in and week out. It comes from truly knowing God. So we talk about those words, love, peace, hope, and joy, this time of year. Everybody talks about them. But do they really know what they are? Do you really know what they are? Because I believe those words are wrapped up in something bigger. Bigger. They're wrapped up in another word. Faith. What does Hebrews 11 one tell you faith is? <coughs> I'll read it to you. Getting blank stares. Maybe. Faith is being sure of what we hope for. Faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Faith is knowing. Faith is knowing God. And you can't really know hope, love, joy, and peace at the level this is supposed to be known at until you know God. And how do you know God? You have to answer the call. What call? The call where God says, I want to be among you. Among you. Let me take it a step further. I want to be in here all the time in all the ways. That's the calling. We can't comprehend Christmas. We can't comprehend Advent. We can't comprehend the miracle until we say yes, God, and mean it in that way. God, come be here. God, let me know you. Remember that saying, it ain't what you know, it's who you know? And we mean it bad when we use it usually. It's, oh, well, somebody didn't get the job because of their knowledge. Well, they got the job because they know somebody else. <laughs> but this time, it is a good thing. It doesn't matter what you think you know. It doesn't matter that you think you know how church is supposed to be done or you think you know what it's supposed to look like. That doesn't matter. What matters is who you know. And who you have to know is God. And if you don't know God, you can't know all the other stuff. That's right. You can't connect the dots. If you leave off the starting dot, mm -hmm. you have to start at the first dot. The first yeah. dot is God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You want to be wild and amazed at Christmas time? Get on your knees and know God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Go to your prayer closet. Pray. Go to your room where you meditate. Meditate. Whatever you do to experience holy, go do that. Uh -huh. And when you get there to do that, don't move until you know that God has come and sat down right next to you and said, love you long time, boo. Uh -huh. <laughs> don't you leave until you get a hold of who God is. Because it's the only way, the only way you're ever going to understand all this other stuff. That's right. That's you right. can't really sing joy to the world yet. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you ain't went and done that. Yeah. You got to go do that. Yeah. <laughs> Mary, did you know? She knew. Mm -hmm. She didn't know every detail. But she knew. Mm -hmm. She knew she would have a baby. 
She knew that baby would change the world. She knew that God said so. And so that was that. Mary, did you know? Isn't that just like us humans, though? Uh -huh. Way after the fact. Now, did you know that that thing you did like 10 years ago was going to make this other thing happen? Make this other... I mean, I love the song. Thank you, people who wrote it. But it just said, Mary knew. Mm -hmm. The angel said, right. you will have a son. You will name him Jesus. He will be the son of God. Mary knew. Yeah. But do you know? Do you know? You can talk about love. You can talk about joy. You can talk about hope and peace and all the Christmas miracles and all the beauty of it. But unless you really know who God is mm -hmm. and why Jesus' birth mattered, yeah. you don't really, really, really know. It doesn't work that way. That's right. I don't know if I can do this, but I'm going to try. I rewrote the song. I wrote it this time as God talking to you. But I'm kind of out of breath because I got really fired up. And was <laughs> <laughs> Child, did you know all I want is to be among you? Child, did you know hope, peace, joy, and love I give to you? Did you know? Saying yes to me, let you know what it means to be really free. Child, did you know all I want is to be among you? Child, did you know? Do you know? Do you know? You can't be joyful, gleeful, hopeful, peaceful without knowing that God calls you to receive the gift of God. And the gift of God is a love that can't ever be taken away from you. It's a peace that passes all human understanding. It's a joy that the world can't give you. And it's hope. Yeah. Hope. And it requires knowing. And knowing requires faith. There's another song. Do you hear what I hear? Do you hear God calling? Do you hear God saying, Okay, this has been fun, but I'm tired of playing the game now. I want to go deeper. I want to do more. And I need you to say yes, God, in a new way. Mary knew. Do you?